Hi everyone, my name is Mary Kosh and I'm a psychology student studying at the University of New England in Armidale, Australia. I'm currently enrolled in a behavioural modification unit and this video is designed to help you or someone you know make a successful smoking cessation attempt using simple yet practical behavioural modification strategies and procedures. Behaviour modification is the field of psychology concerned with analysing and modifying human behaviour. In this video, the target behaviour of interest is of course cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking is considered as a behavioural excess, that is an undesirable behaviour that occurs too frequently. We're going to take a look at how to conduct a functional assessment to determine the triggers or antecedents that cue your smoking behaviour and the consequences associated with that behaviour of smoking that make you want to continue. We're also going to look at differential reinforcement and take a look at some self-management procedures including antecedent control, behavioural contracting and the development of alternative yet more healthful behaviours. So, you're about to help someone quit smoking, but where do you begin? It's important to remember that a basic principle of behavioural analysis is that behaviour is lawful and is governed and controlled by environmental variables. These environmental variables are known as antecedents and consequences, and these make up what is known as the three-term contingencies of reinforcement and punishment. This leads us to conducting a functional assessment, which is the process of gathering information about these antecedents and consequences that are related to cigarette smoking behaviour. This provides us with information about why an individual smokes and why an individual continues to smoke. I recommend the first place to start in the functional assessment is by conducting a behavioural interview. This indirect method of assessment can help you to um, find out general information about the individual's smoking history and it can help the individual actually give you ideas about why they think they smoke and what it is that makes them continue to smoke, what, what are the reinforcers for their behaviour. Um, together you can then develop appropriate hypotheses about the A, B, C contingencies, that is the antecedent behaviour and consequence three-term contingencies that can help you to afterward implement appropriate strategies of behavioural change. Furthermore, you can then conduct direct assessment. This can involve using the descriptive method. Now, a simple way to implement the descriptive method with your client is to provide them with a simple template that they can use to help them record open-ended answers for specific um, antecedents and consequences upon each instance of their smoking. So you get them to record on this sheet for approximately a week the date, the time, the location, the people that are present, um, their exact activity and how they were feeling prior to the cigarette, their activity afterwards and how they were feeling after the cigarette, and any other comments they might like to make regarding their smoking behaviour. So, as you can see, there's plenty of space and room for them to record qualitatively their feelings about their smoking behaviour. The only downside of this descriptive method is that it can be a little bit laborious for the person to record every single instance of smoking behaviour. Just reassure your client that it only should continue for approximately a week, after which the self-monitoring will wind back to a, a less intensive level. Alternatively, you could provide your client with something that's called a checklist, which involves getting them to tick or record against predetermined antecedents and consequences upon every smoking instance. So if they're feeling stressed prior to a cigarette, they would find that antecedent in the checklist and tick against stress. A limitation of the checklist method, however, is that you may not have come up with all of the possible antecedents and consequences prior to developing that checklist and the person may go to record an event, an antecedent event or a reinforcing consequence that is not present on their checklist. So I actually recommend using the descriptive method because it gives the individual more of a chance to record exact, immediate and more accurate information about the smoking behaviour. After you've performed direct assessment, you can then confirm your hypotheses that you've developed together and start implementing some appropriate behavioural change strategies.
Now that you've conducted functional assessment to work out the average number of cigarettes that your client is smoking on a daily basis, as well as the antecedent stimuli and reinforcing consequences that are associated with their smoking behaviour, it's time to start implementing some behavioural modification strategies. The first of which I'm going to recommend to you is differential reinforcement. This process utilises the practices of reinforcement and extinction to reduce the rates of smoking and other undesirable behaviours. In particular, I suggest that you use DRL, a variation known as differential reinforcement of lower rates of responding. In this practice, the reinforcer is delivered contingent upon the lower rates of smoking within a specified time frame. So in a practical sense, DRL actually achieves harm reduction prior to actual cessation. So to implement DRL with your client, you should collaboratively um, set goals and reduce the number of cigarettes that they are allowed to smoke on a daily basis. If your client is motivated enough to do so, they should choose a firm quit date and you should help them reduce the number of cigarettes across the intervention weeks that they smoke per day until they reach that quit date. For example, if their baseline number of cigarettes being smoked was seven, you might move down to five as a maximum criterion for the first week of intervention, down to three in the second week of the intervention, down to one in the third week of the intervention, ultimately reaching a pinnacle of the cessation date at zero cigarettes. Your client should continue to self-monitor their smoking frequency counts on a daily basis and report this information to you. I recommend each evening via text message. In DRL, you're going to reinforce the goal achievement of lower smoking rates. And to do this, you can offer praise, which is effective because it's immediate. You can do it via text message or face to face. And it's also effective because you can offer it in high magnitudes. Another reinforcer that is found to be effective is re-offering your client some monetary increment that they had given to you prior to the start of the intervention. So basically they're re-earning their own money back. It's also important to acknowledge that your client may not also reach goal achievement each and every day. And under these circumstances, you should still offer praise for making the effort. This is very important for your client in terms of maintaining their motivation to progress with the intervention. You should also offer corrective feedback and further instruction if necessary, just to get them back on track. Now let's take a look at some self-management procedures. Self-management procedures are often really effective ways to achieve a smoking cessation attempt. You can use goal setting and self-monitoring, both of which we've discussed in DRL earlier. You could implement a behavioural contract, which a contract manager and a client have both signed. This document outlines the terms and conditions of an intervention and everyone knows what they need to stick to. You can implement antecedent manipulations based on the antecedent conditions you identified during functional assessment. You can get the smoker to present cues for desirable behaviours such as non-smoking and such as these posters around their home. They can remove cues from, for smoking from their home such as removing ashtrays and lighters. They can increase their response effort for smoking such as only carrying the amount of cigarettes agreed to in DRL with them. They can buy fewer cigarettes or even hide cigarettes around the home. They also might say that they like to um, try nicotine replacement therapy to achieve nicotine satiation and an abolishing operation. They should also try and avoid alcohol and caffeine initially during the cessation attempt and they should advise others of their quit attempt to help them in social situations. Finally, you should help your client implement alternative, more healthful and functionally equivalent responses to their smoking. You could encourage them to chew sugar-free gum instead of reaching for a cigarette that will achieve oral stimulation. Similarly, so will an e-cigarette. This one's actually nicotineless and it achieves that same smoking feeling and the sensory stimulation without the health risks associated with the combustion products of burning nicotine and tobacco. You could similarly encourage them to exercise, meditate or urge surf to achieve um, stress reduction and relaxation or they can simply achieve hand manipulation instead of holding that cigarette by perhaps painting their nails or engaging in some knitting. Regardless of the approach you choose, I think it's important to integrate a whole range of approaches of behavioural modification strategies as that will help your client to have best choice and will ultimately give them the best chance at smoking cessation. Yeah.